Hello and welcome to the new episode of Diabetic 365 and today we have Scott from Strange, strangelydiabetic.com and Scott has been diagnosed at an age of 7 and he has been living with type 1 diabetes from past 40 years, that's from past 4 decades and today he is going to share all the experiences and ups and downs that he had all these 40 years to us and before getting started I have a small request please go through today's diabetes recipe diabetes exercise and diabetes tip and uh, let's get started hey Scott how are you hi BJ I'm doing great it's nice to see you it's a pleasure to have you so uh, Scott tell us uh, when were you first diagnosed what was your uh, you know I don't know if you can still remember the old thoughts 40 years back, but uh, what was it like then, way back? Um, well, I was diagnosed in 1970. Um, when I was seven, don't really have too many you know, uh, distinct memories of that. Uh, I was diagnosed at an Army Hospital at Fort Leavenworth, and I was actually regulated outside the hospital, uh, whereas most people were admitted for a week or so. Uh, I was actually, you know, my mom brought me in uh, every morning and every evening uh, for insulin injections and training. And after that, you know, we pretty much did it ourselves. Uh, the the worst memory I have of, and I've, I've talked about this before, is that it wasn't really a memory, it's more of a perception uh, that I came away, just kind of something that I came away with, I guess. Uh, you know, it was the, the sugar diabetes, and you know, it was all bad. Yeah, I'd go blind, I'd lose a leg, I'd kidney failure, probably wouldn't live long enough to go to college. Uh, and you know, I think those guys, I outlived all of them, but uh, it's it doesn't always work that way. And I think things are uh, such they're they're so different now. Um, you know, people are realizing that that's you know not the truth. At least in the medical community, at least part of it anyway. Um, so I'm I'm hoping things get much better for future generations. Actually, I'd like not to see any future generations at some point, but hopefully things will continue to get better for them. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So what was it like uh, your phase through college or through high school? How was it like? It um, well, diabetes back then. This was before uh, glucometers. Uh, you know, we, uh, I started uh, guessing at what my blood sugar was two hours ago by doing urine tests. Uh, so it was always just like driving you know, with one eye in the rearview mirror, basically. The, um, the, the key to, to it all was being very consistent, you know, taking your insulin shots at the right time, uh, eating when you're supposed to, having a snack when you're supposed to, you know, this, that, and the other. The uh, treatment regimen then was um, regular and and uh, NPH. Um, NPH caused me some severe problems, severe problems while I was going through high school uh, with um, nighttime lows, middle of the night lows that were, or even mid morning lows sometimes that were quite debilitating. I mean, as in I could no barely walk type stuff. I'm able to function. You know, mentally I was talking and communicate just fine, but you know, part of my body wouldn't work. Um, and then after that, you know, they actually did a uh, complete neurological workup on me um, at the hospital in Kansas City. And finally, an um, endocrinologist uh, from Wichita uh, was visiting, and, and he looked at me and said, "Well, you need to do a 25-hour or 24-hour you no know, blood glucose monitor." So basically, every hour they came in and you know, took some blood from me um, and found out that I was going you know, super low in the middle of the night. Uh, so that that was happening during high school, and that's when I transitioned from uh, MPH to uh, it was ultra lente, I believe, at the time, as I, I was moving you know, through high school and into college. Um, so it was still on on regular. Um, that that was uh, because the college started in 1981. Uh, I got my first glucose monitor. I think the year before that, it was, it was a, um, a bear monitor. Uh, it's about, about the size of a brick, uh, weighed about that much too, you know, about, about half as thick. Uh, was beige and had a, uh, little, 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 little bitty, uh, uh, screen on it to tell you what the, the reading was after a minute or two. Um, so 
and honestly, the tips were you know really expensive, and I didn't test much. Uh, uh, you know, when going through college was a lot of the usual, you know, oh gee, I can drink now and and do college things, and you know, things with the guys and, and friends and stuff. So it was, uh, I don't know. To me, it seemed like a typical college experience. Uh, diabetes never really was forefront, I guess, for me, and in uh, in a lot of things. When you're in college, okay. So uh, you were uh, in this diabetes uh, Children's with Diabetes 2011 conference few days back. So when you saw all these kids, small kids who were diagnosed with type one, what was your message to them, and what were your thoughts? Um. Well, I really didn't talk uh, to too many of them. I talked to uh, probably more parents. Than I did actually kids. Um, I guess my message, if anything, is you know, live your life. Uh, if you can, you, know, you can either exist, you know, with diabetes, or you can go out and live it. Um, there really shouldn't be anything, you know, holding them back. Uh, that message has changed over the last few years, at least from you know, my point of view. And it used to be, I just, I couldn't even look at a, you know, when the parents blog sites when talking about their kids because it was just. It was uh, it was upsetting to me, but it was it was much easier this time around. You'll have to excuse the cat. The, if you hear it uh -huh. in the background, he's a uh, mouthy. Um, but uh, it was just you know I I just saw uh, you know kids down there having a good time, and uh -huh. the, they I think they were able to relax a lot more because there were so many other diabetics around. You know uh -huh. who oh you know changing out of sight no big deal. Hey, look! I got the same pump you do. That stuff like, like that. Um, so it was, uh, you know, it was like the, you know, the the diabetes wasn't hanging there like the the, the rotten apple about to fall in the middle of the conversation. So uh, tell me this: since you're diabetic from past forty years, what is the main cultural shift you saw back in seventies, eighties to two thousand eleven now? Oh, that's a good one. Um, Well, it, 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 that was kind of hard for me to answer. For the um, first thirty odd years, I was pretty isolated in this. Um, I mean, it wasn't until I actually got online uh, and actually started using uh, uh, the online tools that were available for you know, social purposes instead of just news, and email, which is pretty much all I used the internet for previously, um, that I was really able to kind of see what uh, other people were were experiencing with it. Um, I've never been too uh, closed off about my diabetes. Uh, people I work with, people I travel with, uh, uh, people I spend a lot of time with all know that I'm diabetic. Uh, that's for a very selfish reason, so when I, I screw up, I have a much better chance of survival uh, at that point. Um, I guess I guess the, uh, the, the biggest thing that I have noticed over the years is that there is so much more um, media about type two since it's such a big uh, uh, epidemic. Ep epidemic, yeah, yeah. Um, and even type one is uh, drastically on the increase. Um, there's, there's got to be something in the environment that's causing it. We just don't know what it is yet. Um, but the and and there are so many stereotypes out there that you know. That even I learned everything that I knew about type two from the media, you know, was affected by, um, and it took me uh, quite a while to, you know, learn the truth about, you know, what really goes on with type two, um, and realize that, you know, they go through a lot of the same things we do, uh, and but the uh, the stereotypes they just they persist, and they don't do much really to. Um, Help us at all, uh, as far as you know, you know. You keep hearing, you know, if you just you know, you exercise more, you ate better, you know, you wouldn't be diabetic. So it's you know, it's all the diabetics' fault. And well, that's just that's wrong. Um, but it, that doesn't sell, I guess, is the uh, the thing that we keep seeing. You know, if it's uh, sensational, it'll, it has a much better chance of getting you know in print, you know, on the on the TV. 
Uh, so getting getting uh, accurate information out there at people times is pretty challenging. So um, I know you have talked this uh, many times before, but how do you overcome diabetic guilt? That was that was a hard one. Um, the worst the worst guilt I had um, was honestly was uh, survivor guilt. Uh, I didn't see why it was fair that now I've been here for, for for 40 years and there were entire decades where I didn't take care of myself properly and yet here I sit um, you know, all my fingers and toes and everything's in working order so if that bothered me a lot um, you know I hear stories of you know other other diabetics who are not so fortunate um, you know especially some uh, type 2 individuals who may not even be diagnosed until you know, irreversible complications have set in. Uh, so it's it, it became a matter for me anyway of just saying there's only so much I can do. The only things that, that I can affect are the, the ones that directly concern me. Um, it's not my f fault that these terrible things are happening to other people. Uh, I wish you know, that they weren't uh, but it's it's not my fault. Um, you know, then there's always the the twinges of guilt you get just for you know friends and family, you know, worrying about you, and you try and minimize that the best you can. Um, it's uh, it's not easy at times, but again, it's there's, there's only so much that that I can do, and really the only thing I can do is affect you know my immediate vicinity, so to speak. Uh -huh. So uh, you, uh, you mean you are on all these uh, Twitter or Facebook or in the DSMA you participate every week. So uh, what is the what do you see people complaining most all the time, and what's your advice to them? Um. Well, there's always there's always complaints about misinformation, and stereotypes, um, even among the. Uh, Medical professionals who um, you know, may not have you no know, a lot of understanding of of, uh, of diabetes. You know, they, um, you know, some medical professionals are really good with it. You know, they actually spend time and talk to the patient and understand what's going on. Others, you no know, kind of one just running through the mill and it's you know diabetes by the numbers you do this you'll do fine. Well, guess what? You know, and then you you do all that, and you come back. Your numbers aren't right where they're supposed to be. So you, know, you get branded as non-compliant, or uh, told that uh, you need to do better. And you're going, "Well, doc, I did exactly what you told told me." Um, so sometimes I think the doctors need to take a step back and say, "Okay, this this isn't working. We we need to try something else." Mm -hmm. um, now, I guess basically all I would say to people is, you have to be your own advocate. Um, a lot of boils down to is that you are in charge of your own health. You know, it's your responsibility. Uh, so you need to be educated. You need to learn as much as you can about it. Um, but your doctor may know more in general about about, uh, about diabetes, you know, if you're, especially if you're seeing an endo. Uh, but you're always going to know your diabetes better. Um, so it's a kind of a, a meeting of the minds there to to find out what's best for you. Um, I've taken a, my son had some some health problems uh, when he was younger, and uh, that's that's when I learned that you know I was in charge. Uh, and doctors didn't like that. Well, they could go treat someone else. The um, and I've applied that you know recently I, I guess um, to my diabetes, and I've uh, I've you know I've been lucky enough to find some some great doctors who you know actually work with me. So look for those. Find those if you can, uh, and when you find them, hang on to them very tightly. Okay. Okay. So, uh, 